Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Now, two areas for investing that are being talked about right now are artificial intelligence and ETFs. Now, if these are of interest to you, then tonight is your night as we get into the hottest AI stocks and ETFs to buy in 2023. We'll also answer your questions on buying, selling, stock losses, adding to positions, plus more. We'll also share our, our analysis on the stocks that you've asked us to take a look at. First up tonight, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week before diving into our view on the world markets. Now it's time to sit back and relax as tonight will be jam-packed as we answer your emails, take your phone calls, and give you the answers to some of the most important questions around the stock market. Hello and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. I'm Dale Gillam, your host for tonight, and joining me is the fabulous Janine Cox, and we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Now, Dale, as you mentioned in the introduction, we're talking about AI this week, and I know, like me, that you're super excited about this one. And before we get into that, I know I rushed you last week straight into the hot tip, and no apologies from me on that. I know Just you never more do. whip cracking tonight. <laughs> and Dale, I should add, with the market creating so many opportunities last week that you're really spoiled for choice. So what is your hot stock tip? Whip cracking. Is that like <laughs> that harassment that I can talk to HR about? <laughs> no. Whip cracking? <laughs> it would be none of that. I don't know, people, I get cracked on all the time, don't Can I? Can we just get into it? I just said I was getting cracked on all the time. I think What's we should on? get into okay. it. Okay. Well, the stock tip for tonight is, actually, I don't want to bring up the chart. I actually want to bring up the, the um, Market Index website because I want to talk about Adbury or ABC as the stock ticket code. So I just want to show with people a few different things. Um, it's dividend yields 2%, so it's on the low side. PE ratio is about 15.9, so it's not super low, but it's not too bad. Um, in that terms, one year return 4.2%, uh, market cap $1.62 billion. So it's not too bad from that point of view, but it is looking right. And you can see here over the last sort of year what we've got here had a big fall away, but we've got this big lift up through uh, this period through here only a couple of months ago. So is it about to take off again? And that's really what we're going to look at when we look at the chart. So looking at the chart, on the left is a monthly chart and on the right is the weekly chart. And you can see that huge big move up over a couple of weeks and a little bit of a stabilization there. But I've got a couple of things on the monthly chart. And looking at this, you can just see how it just beautifully trends all the way through here. So I want to put on a couple of um, layers from my Optima workbook. And let me just get that out of the road a little bit. It's, and a, bit, it's a bit thin on the ground there on the, in your layers. I know. I've, look, I've got to try and keep it high level for everybody because probably 70, I think it's 70% of our viewers are more investors or beginners. So I'm trying to keep the, the... You don't want to confuse them. No, I confuse our students often enough when I put too much <laughs> on charts. You know? no, I don't, no, they're pretty good. But uh, I just want to keep things really, really simple. So this is basic just basic support and resistance. So we can see here, it's nearing a, a level through there at $2.63. It's sort of found some support above that $1.17 level. But this is a really important one through here, about $3.80. So if we use our little um, tool, we can see from where it currently is to that level there, that's 55% rise. So there's plenty of room to profit before we get into another resistance level once it sort of breaks through this area. And I'm not sure it will stop at that area, but I think there's some really good turn to get up into that sort of area before it gets any major resistance. Now I'm just going to turn that layer off and put just a trend line and just showing you how it's done on a trend line, a beautiful, nice monthly trend line down through here. It's found some support uh, in April at $1.53, moved up strongly over two months, looking great. I think that looks really, really nice from that point of view. In my book, in my first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds, I talk about buying on one monthly close above the trend line. We've had one month above the trend line in two weeks now. So it's still in that realms of um, a buy signal from my book or following the rules in my book. Just going on to the weekly chart, you can see this big move up through there 
over that three odd weeks. And you can see if I go from that bar there to there, it's, it's really taken off like a rocket up around 50 odd percent. So it's just gone sideways a little bit. Now, this could have been an exhaustion of the move and we may not see it again. And we've seen a little bit of indecision through here. Last week was a bit indecisive there. Even though we had a really bullish week and it was a little bit indecisive the week before, currently this week, only two days, Monday and Tuesday's data in there. But I'm just gonna put, um, just put another layer on here. And you can see here just a basic trend line coming through there giving us a nice little buy signal. But I think if it gets through that area and closes up through that area and gets some clean air, I think we could be seeing it moving up to that next um, resistance level, Janine. Uh, that's my take. So my tip was all right, but then if it if it um, tanks, you'll call it my tip. So you're, right so you're, yours? you're taking ownership of this one? So if it tanks, it's your it, fault? It, you'll say if it tanks, it's mine. But, but if, if it, it goes does really well, well it's, it's mine. Isn't that the way it works? <laughs> well, this is the first, I mean, everybody, just to let you know, Janine's giving me this hot tip for the day because I was busy all day. So if it tanks, she's taking responsibility for it. But thank you for that. Thank you. It's good for my male, it's fragile teamwork. male ego. It is. People don't understand how, like, people don't understand us. We've been best friends for like 20 something, 25 years. You know, people don't understand that. Mm. But anyway, we do need to move on. That's Otherwise, I'll start to cry. We'll just have a moment there. <laughs> That's it for our weekly hot stock tip. If you have questions for us, call us on 0392909988. That's 0392909988. If you prefer to text, send your question to the number on your screen. I was just thinking, of, I was just keep, keep thinking of that moment. I hope my wife doesn't hear you say that. <laughs> Boy, um, to give you some incentive to get things started, the first caller into the show right now gets a free copy of my latest book, Accelerate Your Wealth, It's Your Money, Your Choice. So make sure you pick up your phone and dial 92909988. Just do it right now. Now, tonight is the third Tuesday in the month, which means... We're going to take a look at world markets. So, Janine, let's get into the charts. Actually, someone told me the other day that that's the best book that they've ever read on the market. Is it? Yep. Was it my mother? No. Who was it? It was someone who's a an independent yeah, reviewer. Yeah, an independent potential client. Yes. Oh, well mm. done. Thank you for that. There you well, go. Well done. Why am I saying thank you to that? <laughs> you but did well. I did well. <laughs> thank you. Whoever said that to Janine. Mm. Now let's get into the world market. So what All have right. you got on your screen? Fantastic. Now you can see there. Mm. This is the yearly uh, picture of what's going on across the globe. Oh, the Nasdaq. Nasdaq 100 up 42 percent. The Nasdaq Comp up 35 mm. percent. So some big moves there with. Mm. Technology. You know, it's amazing how you know this area has come right back into play again, isn't it? Mm. So it wasn't long ago that this was the worst area in the market. We often tell people when we're doing the sectors, pay yep. attention to the ones that are wor the worst, worst because sectors. they will come back. Yeah, like energy last week. Yeah, the Nikkei stock average 225, mm. up 25.4%. Yeah. The Tokyo market, so we're getting all of the Asian markets coming up, rising mm. to the top, if you like, 19.3%. S&P 500 up 17.3%. The European market up 14.8, almost 15% the DAX, there. Yep, German. Um, the DAX, the CAC is actually up 11.8. Now we've got the BSE 30 India um, index up 9.4%. That's actually done reasonably well. European market, where's the Australian market right now? We better get a move on. Well, we're right down at 3.81. But <laughs> okay. then the Dow's not much better at 4.33, and this is where we're mm. seeing like we were talking about last month when we were talking about this, is how the S&P 500 is a bit top heavy in tech stocks and that's really what's driving through from the NASDAQ. Yeah, but surely that's got to exhaust soon. Yeah, yesterday I had a bit of a look at the Dow and the S&P 500 for mm. um, our Talking Wealth subscribers and I think if we get time at the end of the show in our special stuff, maybe yeah. we might have a bit of a look at some of the stocks in the Dow and S&P 500. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Mm. All right. Um, now, if we just go down the list a little bit more, we can see mm. the, the S&P ASX 200, 3.5%. Mm. The Straits Times Industrial mm. Index up 0.3. FTSE is um, severely lagging. These are the markets that need to catch up that where there could be some opportunities. And I'd just like to go to one of the charts and mm. have a look. So. I've got the Hang Seng Index up on the screen right there. You can see there short term, this is a nice little pullback, That's a nice isn't little it? Pullback, nice isn't orderly it? pullback, which it could just break up out of, I'd be watching mm. this um, to see too. what's going on. You so know, you're nice suggesting move. people look at an um, ETF? 
Um, I'm not suggesting they look at an ETF, but some exposure to this if they are looking into Asian markets okay. may be quite good. A rise through that high there, 20, uh, what is it, 20,000? Could be quite good. Mm -hmm. All right, well, look, that's um, a feature for the discussion on world markets. So, okay. And that's our thoughts on the world markets. Next, we have some great stocks to share with you. And we've got a huge list tonight, including EDV. We've got lots of AI stocks on the list, haven't we, as well? I don't know what you've got on the list, but <laughs> I know it's secret. I know it's not exhaustive. She's I got that you. many, I think. <laughs> I've lost, I took off my shoes and I still couldn't count that many stocks. But anyway, <laughs> now, Janine, let's get into our first email for tonight. Now, our first email is from Thushan. And Thushan, Thushan, sorry about that, if, mate, if I said that wrong. Thushan, he says, Dear Janine and Dale, I just brought 200 units of EDV at an average cost of $6.20. Planning to add around 1,000 units. Could you please give me some details? I like your presentation so much. Thanks, Thushan. Now, I don't understand why this stock, um, because we talked about it in our show recently. It, there did. was a trend line over the top of it. It wasn't ready to buy. I understand and what he's trying to do. He's just completely doing the wrong thing. Trying but to pick anyway. the bottom. Well, no, because he's bought 200 units and he's seen a tank. And we'll look at this, mm. the chart in a second. But he's doing something that's and not mildly dangerous, seriously dangerous. Oh, so you're saying he's bought it when it's tanked? Yeah. That. So he, no, that's what he's wanting to do: buying a thousand units mm. after it's tanked More. to try and average down his cost. But then. What you're doing is if, if you're, he's increasing his risk, he's buying five times more, he's wanting to buy five mm. times more than his initial purchase. Yep. That is seriously... When he's in loss. Regardless, and, and when it's in loss, and it could, and it's not even showing that it's stopped falling yet. Mm. So then it could be a bigger loss again. So know, that's, that's a serious... Really high risk thing I don't have do. I mean, I'm not having a go at him. It's just seriously bad strategy. Yeah, look, I'm just looking at the chart there. So mm. let's have a look at how far it's fallen. So from the close here on, mm. was it Friday? And it closed down 9.9, nearly 10%, but mm. it actually dipped around 13.7% for the day. It's up a little bit off the bottom, which often happens when mm. we see such huge falls like that. But there's no guarantees right now that it's going to reverse and move back up. Now, I want to explain a, a little bit about what I was talking about. So if you buy a stock, let's say you buy it at a dollar, mm. okay? And let's say it goes up to a dollar fifty, and you bought 200 at a dollar, mm. but then it dollar fifty you buy a thousand mm. right now imagine if that thousand shares at a dollar fifty if that falls ten percent mm. how much money have you got of the first position how I much have, profit you got left you pretty much eroded all of that profit well, why would you even do that though that, that's but that's what nuts. I'm saying that's the danger because every every cent mm. that that second position drops it's taking five cents of the profit of the first position. Are you talking about a times. profit, not a loss? What yeah, he's doing is the opposite. Yeah, but it's worse when you're doing it in a loss. Mm. It's really, and especially when buying something that's already, that we already know is in a down move, mm. that we don't know it's bottomed, and so it's more of a buy and pray method that I'll buy five times more, average my cost down, and then I'll try and make more money. It's just a, yeah, it's again, nuts. it's not mm. a smart move. So to Sean, we're just I, again, I'm not trying to be mm. rude to you or anything else or, or you know, um, belittle what you're trying to do. I understand you're trying to profit from the market. Wrong strategy. Mm. Completely wrong strategy. That's it for me on EDV. Yeah, EDV. Good thought. Now, before we get into analysing um, more great um, shares, have we mm. got another email? Have we, have we got another email? We do have another email there, so let's go and grab the email. If you want to read it out for us off All the right. sheet, we'll I'll get it up and I'll bring it, it up on the thing. Now, this is really mm. interesting. Um, oh, actually, what we wanted to talk about was. Mm. Um, we wanted to actually get to see if, if people were interested in your book, didn't we? Oh, well, if people want to buy my book, my first book, How to Beat the Managed Funds by 20%, it is still for free. You've just got to pay the shipping. Just get on our home page of our website. Um, there's a big button there. You click on it and we'll send it out to you just to pay the shipping. I know a lot of people have uh, given us a lot of great reviews on that book, but um, as I said, if you do want to pick out my first book. That's one for Tushan. If you actually bought the book, you probably wouldn't be doing that strategy you yeah, asked about. Yeah, that's a really good point. So, now so you're going to get into the next email? Yeah, we've actually got a question now from Rhonda. Thank mm. you so much, Rhonda. Hi, Janine and Dale. Firstly, I want to express my thanks to everyone at Wealth Within. Jill and Virginia are great people to welcome and problem solve or pass on. Scott has been amazing, as, Jason, as has Jason, Veronique, Emma and everyone else who are trying to make my life easier while I absorb all the amazing information that you and your colleagues have put together. 
My question for today is about the process of buying and selling. In, in particular, selling under pressure from the he who knows how to apply it. <laughs> I bought some shares for our combined portfolio, the majority in the top 20, and all with good dividends. And I noticed that there are two choices, buying or selling at market price or at a designated amount. If I have a 15% stop loss and sell at market price, there is a good chance that the loss may be 20%. Is it possible to set a stop loss at the time you purchase the stock so that if the price does fall, you are already in there, you're already in there with a chance of selling at a profit? Or is it a good idea to set a 10% stop loss so that at the time you sell, you may actually have a 15% stop? Many thanks. Love the show and the course. Cheers, Rhonda. P.S. I've just watched 10 best stocks for dividends. And while it wasn't one of Janine's jokes, I had a great belly laugh because you made module four a necessity when you explain the mentoring process in that unit. How can I not complete the whole diploma? She said, beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, Rhonda. What a good question. Because mm. it is, it's, I know a lot of people when they're new to trading think, you know, 15% stop loss, I'm losing too much. Mm and they go, oh, I only want to set my stop loss at five or 10%. Or well, what if the stock gaps through that and I'm losing 20, 25% and they think that's high probability, but it's not really high probability. The number of stocks that do that, depending on what yeah. end of the market you're on, if you're at the high end of the market, it's probably pretty low. Mm. However, Rhonda, it's mm. more about thinking about the money management side of it and the risk to your overall portfolio in total. So mm. when we set risk, Dale, obviously we um, look at the risk and we the aim is to um, keep it under around 2%. That's the aim. So mm. it's about your position sizing and looking at the stop loss as well, not just in isolation. But it's not always, when you set your 15% stop loss, the thing is we don't always get stopped out on that stop loss mm. either. Because you might find a stock, it'll go up and then it'll give us a technical signal as it starts going down and you'll be selling out near your buy price or maybe just below your buy price because of a technical rule that you'll learn in the course. So that's also there because I know when we did a lot of testing on that, our average loss was like 9%, not 15 yeah, well, I think you've got mm. to actually look mm. at it and say, well, I, if I set a 15% stop loss, yes, I know there's going to be a bit of slippage, but you position yourself mm. into each holding of your whole portfolio so that you're going to be well within that percentage, allowable percentage that you're comfortable with, mm. really. And we've got rules, as I said, in our course for that. Well, in Module 4 so, and 5, she's going to learn a lot more about where to set the but, stop but loss But she better. may actually, look, when, when you're in Module mm. 3, you can work out whether you can actually set a stop loss at 10% mm. and whether that still gives you a great result across the, the overall portfolio. So that's, if you're more comfortable setting them at 10% because of the impact on you. So if you had, uh, let's take an example, mm. 100,000. Uh, dollars in the market, say 10,000 in each um, for each share over 10 shares, then if you're looking at a stop loss for mm -hmm. that and you set the stop loss at 15%, it's 1.5% of your overall portfolio that mm -hmm. you're risking. Are you comfortable with that? That's really the question that you need to ask. So that could be slightly more, but still less than 2% if it was 1.8% by the time you got out. So it's about weighing all of that up and assessing what the risk is. And if you're not mm. comfortable with that, it may be 1% that you're happy with of your whole portfolio. And therefore, you've just got to look at how, whether you're going to change the position size or whether you're going to change the number of holdings in your portfolio. Mm. Very good mm. point, very good point. Now, there's two other things she mentioned. One is he who thinks he knows. Mm. Um, and Rhonda, totally ignore him. Tell him to go away and watch the football or something like that. You can't have... <laughs> yeah, and, and I'm saying that with all um, sincerity from that point of view because we've ha often had a partner try and get involved and more often than not, it's the male trying to tell the, 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 the husband, trying to tell the wife what to do. Unless he's done the study, Rhonda, tell him to just go and watch the football or go do something else and get out of your road because you will make the money. There is no doubt in my mind if they let you do that. And, and I'm saying that a bit of tongue in cheek and a bit of fun. Um, and we have had sometimes it's been the wife hounding and pounding the, the husband who's trying to trade and make money out of that too. And we've had to um, get involved in that and say, just leave your partner alone, let them do what they're doing because you're the one that's learning for that. The other question Rhonda had was about um, the buy, 
position because you're saying because you can buy at market or you can buy at a price limit. That's just pretty normal Rhonda. What we do most of the time is just buy at market. So if you're able to place your trade when the market opens, just buy at market all the time. And if you're buying big stocks or during the day. Yeah, during the day. At any time. Any mm. which, whenever you put, do that during the day, you can buy at market and as long as it's big stocks that you're buying. If you're buying more lower capitalized stocks you might set a limit price so buy up to a certain limit for example let's say 50 cents is your trigger to buy you might say i'll buy up to 52 cents and it'll buy at any price up to 52 cents you can do that as well if you're trading outside of out market hours like placing it outside of market hours then what you need to do is you always have to set a limit price on that anyway. So that's the explanation of all of that. I think we've covered all of Rhonda's questions. I think we? she'll love you for that. Now, if you do want to be like Rhonda, you can send us an email or pick up your phone. Better still, ring us on 9290-9988. Give us a call right now. All right, Dale. Mm -hmm. Now it's time that we get into the topic. Yeah. Before we do, I'd like to share my quote for mm -hmm. the night from one uh, none other, I should say, than Elon Musk who needs no introduction, he said, I think it's very important to have a feedback loop where you're constantly thinking about what you've done and how you could be doing better. I think that's the single best piece of advice, constantly thinking about how you could be doing things better and questioning yourself. And you can really relate that um, to oh, the stock perfect, market and it, everything it? you do, yeah. Mm. Well, it is, it's just perfect for tonight in terms of... Mm. Just know. in terms of getting people... Well, it's you know, what you're talking about with, with the Rhonda mm. with her email, it's that feedback loop that a lot of people don't get when they're learning in the stock market. So critical. They don't get that. It's you know, it's, it's easy to stand in front of a, and the mirror and check your hair. That's what mm. you're doing. You're getting feedback and brushing your hair you or sure? whatever else. But how do you do that? You sure well, about the hair bit? Not my hair. I don't have enough hair to check it very much. But you know, but it's like when you're trying to learn how to trade and you maybe pick up something from a book or you watch a YouTube video, and you're trying to do it. Mm. Who's checking you? Exactly. Who's giving you that feedback loop? I totally like mm. that. All right. Mm. Now, you said it, Dale. I so did. this week we're chatting about something that's super hot right now, and mm. that is AI or artificial intelligence. And it's used everywhere, including healthcare, marketing, data management, and fintech. And let's not forget cybersecurity. Yep. And within the private and public sectors. Now, you ought to, now you thought cryptos were hot. Well, and then precious metals. Now it's AI is the hottest thing since sliced bread. And this is not, one is not likely to go away. It's likely to be here for decades. So tonight we share some important facts and of course, great stocks to buy. Well, that is exciting to know, Janine. I know AI will impact our lives in more ways than we can currently imagine now. And we thank those of all us, all those who asked us to cover this interesting topic because I know we did get a lot of people saying, when are you going to cover AI stock? Yeah. So we actually did that. We love to receive your requests and it's great to see more and more getting involved or more of you more getting involved in this show. As it, re you know, to me, it's your show, so keep telling us what, what you actually want. So I think now, you know, we need to move on to the next little bit, don't we? Now, Dale, it's not mm -hmm. um, just the excitement about all yep. that AI creates, it's actually also fear, which we've well, seen true. a lot of things about that. And some people are very fearful about the risks and where the AI race might leave humankind. Perhaps they've watched too many Terminator movies with Arnie. You know, I was watching Arnie. I'll be back. I was watching, I'll be back. Uh, you'll be back. <laughs> to say that. Um, I was watching a three-part series, I think it was on Netflix or Amazon the other day about Arnie, mm. about his life. Really interesting. Was it? Very positive motivation story, so there you go. There you go. Nothing about AI, but okay. it was You exciting. saw lots of muscle. Yeah. <laughs> Is that all you can think about, muscles? Exactly. So that was perfect, wasn't it? Mm. So stay tuned. We've got some hot stocks. Forget about the muscles. And we'll look at whether it's time to buy. Before we get into that, you've got to appreciate the scale of the investment on a global scale and how this will help fuel the next boom. So you can sit back, mm. relax. You're in the box seat. Okay, Janine. Um, is this really new? I mean, w there's always a fad to create growth in the market, and we've seen that over the years. Mm. We've seen multiple, multiple fads. But what I really pre appreciate about this is how far reaching it is. It's not just about big tech companies beating their bottom lines and, you know, and investing heavily into AI and cybersecurity. It really is broadly right across the board there, isn't it? It's a movement everywhere for those. Are fearful about AI or fearful of AI. It's not 
the AI you, you really ought to be concerned about. And all the things that mm. I see about it, it's not the actual AI you've got to be concerned about, um, but instead company debt. You now we're considering whether all of this could lead to another tech wreck. Now it's definitely something to watch over the next few years because we're seeing a lot of that at the moment. Mm. Um, it, there's, AI is really, really exciting and I think you know, it's not the one that you need to be scared about, it's the mm. scary people doing stuff with AI That's that you have exactly to be scared right. about. <laughs> Well, um, we will be keeping yeah. you posted on that. Now, let's take a look at a chart of the All Lords and the S&P 500 to really understand the biggest risks. Okay, so, so we, we've got the All Lords up on the screen now? Yep. Okay, so here we are. We can see there. Um, mm -hmm. Now, we can look back in time. So what have you got on there? You've got the All Ordinaries is the bar chart, and what is the green thing? So the, the green, green thing is the S&P 500. Okay, right? now I understand. Now, we know that back in 87, mm -hmm. uh, we had a major market correction, and that was due to the start of all of this computer trading. And you and I have said before that since all of that happened, there have been, um, there's been much more or higher volatility on our market. Mm. And Even just more so since more the GFC. erratic sort of trading, isn't it? And people were concerned about mm. algo trading during the GFC. So AI is nothing new. It's been no. around this whole time and it's being used in lots of different industries. It's, it's almost like the mm. industry, as in the financial industry, are using it to attract investors um, into the market on a big scale because, mm. you know, I can, I mean, my background covers this sort of thing and, and I can tell you that there's automation everywhere. Oh, yeah, well, every business wants to put more automation mm. in, into their business. So we've always had systems and automated systems. You were manufacturing yeah. from, you know, like what men forward with their production line. Well, the most interesting AI is the, is mm. the ones that they um, create that help, that think, start to think for themselves. That's, That's where, where people it's starting are to get really interesting, isn't it? It is, and I've seen a lot of stuff on AI more recently, a lot of inventions for AI and a lot. I mean, obviously, everybody's mm. heard about ChatGPT, which we use yep. to, you know, it's great. Instead of using Google, you go ChatGPT and ask it a question. You don't get thousands of ads that are irrelevant to you and mm. going to web pages that are completely irrelevant to you. But the point here is that with the tech mm. side of things, because we say that the US market has been mm. a lot you know, um, a lot more volatile and we've seen this big push up on the US mm. market. But when we look at what's been happening over more recent times, our market's more or less tracked it. Yeah. So you yeah. can see these moves here prior to COVID, our market was very mm. similar, the pullbacks, the rise into this high and the fall that followed. The only thing that I've noticed is that the tech rec or the tech um, correction obviously made the US market far more volatile. So it went down, I think, about 28, 30 percent. Whereas our market was down around 17 percent. Mm. Now that's pretty normal to see the US market correct, you know, at least 50 percent, if not but double tech more, huge double the, ours. our market. Yep. Yeah. On at any time, except for the bigger corrections when they come in. So yeah. this this one's a good example of that smaller correction. And that's why when I was watching our market correct with the US yeah. market, I wasn't expecting our market to implode from there because of the the difference between our market and the US market in terms of the level of correction that's going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, as you can see, we're more aligned to where the Dow is because it's only, you know, we're at three point something percent, there are four point something percent for yeah. the uh, S&P 500, 18, 90 percent or whatever that was, NASDAQ mm. much higher because the, the tech sector in the US in the S&P 500 is like 28 percent of the S&P 500. Mm. It's less than two percent of our market. Exactly. So we're not going to get the same moves out of that tech. The so more so while we don't get tech. that upside, we're not going to get that huge mm. volatility on the downside Correct. like the US market But there's still had. plenty of opportunity in the Australian market. Mm. But one of the things I'd like to say and things that you've alluded to numerous times is that our big end of town are just sheep. Mm. And I think it's because of globalization with that information, how much information do we just get fed from the US and then it's just our, our, our sheep follow on and just do what they're doing in the US and mm. follow all that. And I think that's part of it as well. But I think that gives us a distinct advantage as individuals. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Dale. Oh, I just read your mind. Isn't that scary? Ooh, it is scary. You're going to ask me about the global level of investment, aren't you, in AI? So before you can get a word in, let's take a quick look at a graph. All right. So let's bring up the graph. Okay. If I can get that. Okay. Okay. Well, you're going to talk about this graph, aren't you? Not I me. I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> okay. It's on the screen. So this was a graph 
um, to 2021, and notice how the curve accelerates, and it is the sum of private investment mergers and acquisitions, public offers and minority stakes, and it was set to reach more than 250 billion US dollars in around 2021. So, you know, the acceleration mm. of that curve is what's really interesting. Well, it's got it? to that tipping point. Everything has that sort of tipping point. Have you ever read that book by Malcolm Gladwell, The Tipping Point? Uh, I did a long time ago. Very good book. If you haven't read it, read it. Really mm. good book. But it's that point of what that point does it really change. start? Um, well, not necessarily, but it's that talked about a lot of things, mm. whether it's fashion and all sorts of other stuff. But what a point did Nike take off? Mm. Uh, what's the tipping point for that? And that's what we're seeing on this graph. Well, that graph is there is a tipping point that AI just went bang. And mm. that's what we're seeing on there. So it is at, it's past that tipping point. Okay, so firstly, can you share your impression of the graph, please? Well, I just did, didn't I? A bit more. A bit more. You want a bit more. I mean, I think when you're seeing that, that, that moving past that tipping point, at that point, you know it's a lot more sustainable and mm. a longer-term thing, not a short-term thing. Yeah, so spending's mm. likely to rise. Yeah, and I think you're going to see a lot more spending into AI. A lot. It's so exciting for businesses and it's so exciting for me and my thinking about what I can be doing. Now, do I think AI can really be as good a trader as what an individual have can be. Mm -hmm. I'm not it's convinced tell you yet. what to have for breakfast. I'm not what you convinced wear. yet, but I don't want anything to tell me. My wife You'll tells me. You'll stand in front of a mirror and it'll just say. I have a wife okay, that tells me what I have like for breakfast and what today. I'm wearing. What do I need to wear? My wife's don't hot every be. day. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, anyway. Spending levels um, have actually plateaued, which is interesting. Well, so, but we know that we're going into a bull market. What happens in a bull market? Everything yeah. gets hyped up, doesn't Everything it? Including spending on AI. I bet it's going to take off mm. again. Well, as I was, I was also saying, and I was actually talking about that in my market wrap yesterday. It was about sort of you know, we've got high CPI, but it's dropped a tiny and it'll be an mm. interest rates will peak. But we really haven't had a expansionary phase on our economy or market, and neither has the US over the last three, four, five years. Tech's got to fuel so it, doesn't it? has got to fuel. Something's mm. got to fuel it, so let's see what's going to happen, and I think we're about to explode into a new bull market. Well, what's your tip then? Um, is it, you know, to, for them to follow things like government spending and, and government contracts? Well, generally, money, generally money the government spends ends up in corporate, ends up in the share market, mm. both in the Australia and the US, so we, we see that all the time. And there's a huge value in those contracts. So the stock market, correct. when they hear that some company's getting a government contract, it's a big tick, you know. It's like, I wouldn't discount, whilst I think this area of AI is great, yeah. I wouldn't also discount some of the old boring stocks. Mm. I think some of those older boring stocks will do really well. Great. They know how to make money. Okay, well, Dale, you better take a look at this then. Now, this mm. is actually um, the cover page for a report that... Um, Oops, yeah. this is a cover page for a report that is really important for you to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. So what's the report? Well, you're going to find out in a minute. I, I am. He's eager. <laughs> Moving on. You keep me waiting. The, you. I found the Stanford Institute for Human-Centred Artificial Intelligence put out this report each year. The group involved are an interdisciplinary group of experts from across academia and industry, and the report is a, is a great read for anyone who's doing research. It's very detailed, I'm going to warn you in advance. It's got a nice cover. Um, <laughs> of the data relating to artificial intelligence. And it is for decision makers um, to look at the advanced AI responsibility and look at it ethically with humans in mind, which is nice, isn't it? Well, I mean, they're not all fanatics who are into AI, are they? <laughs> I mean, most of them are pretty people that you can trust, but geez, they never make these things easy, do they, to read? I mean, there's just reams of stuff on here, but. Who'd read all of that? I oh, know, probably fanatics or academics. I'd say somebody who's interested in AI. <laughs> it's worth a, at least reading the summaries in each section, investigating some of the, the graphs. Well, it'll give you insights into what to do. So what do you need to know? Well, the hot areas, of course, um, and that would and be mindful that Stanford Institute showed spending had actually declined in 2022 by around 26.7%. Though global private investment alone was around 92 billion US dollars. Wow, that's still a big number, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Jeez. definitely. What is. else did it say? Well, look, we need to have a look what's next. Because I'm relying on you to give me the summary. Well, I think we need to have a look at what's next. Okay. How about, well, well, what is um, next? Now, I'm glad that you asked, finally. <laughs> Take a look. According to the International Data Corporation, the IDC worldwide spending will pass 300 billion US dollars in 2026. Holy shit. <laughs> you serious? You weren't How supposed much? to say that. <laughs> sorry. All right, I'm sorry to say, oh, wow, that's a big number, isn't it? Um, I'm blown away by that. <laughs> yeah. God. Did you want to mention the focus areas or you just let the viewers read the report and find out for themselves? 
Now, we want to give them that shortcut. Yeah. You already know what I'm going to say. We love our viewers. So okay, let's I know that. give it to them, shall we? Okay, I'm not holding back here. So what's the next one? Okay. Um, it's about, um, we need to look at the well, breakdowns. The breakdown for private sector. Yeah, okay, so this is another report by Stanford. That's right. Okay. Now, some important areas of investment for the private sector were medical and healthcare at 6.1 billion US dollars, data management processing, 5.9 billion dollars, and fintech, 5.5 billion dollars. <whistles> You're interested in two of the two particular areas, aren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm interested in fintech very, 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 very much. I think mm -hmm. there's some super exciting stuff. I've been dealing yep. with a lot of people in the fintechs, fintech area. I've interviewed a few for Talking Wealth as well. Great. Um, we'll there's some really exciting technologies out. I mean, imagine going for a bank loan, right? And you've got a pile of paperwork. <laughs> Instead of having the pile of paperwork, you hit a button. <laughs> All Done. right. That's well, what's happening. Yes, awesome. Well, you're going to love some of the stocks that we've got on the watch list. Let's get into the stock, shall we? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> so what have we got there? All right, first one is actually... Yeah. Tyro. Tyro payments, yeah, there's an interesting one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, you can see it's bounced off that bottom there. What, market what, cap, 669 market minutes. Cap. Yep. It's um, a smaller end. Yeah, smaller end, but it's not too bad. I mean, as long as it's above 500 million, I'm pretty happy with that. You can see mm -hmm. it's just come off this low. At, that was back in June 2022, where, where a lot of... Um, markets turned and a lot of big stocks turned mm -hmm. and now it's just come back to test that we really like to see that sort of formation happening so far it's in the very early phases of this recovery i mean look at all that resistance when it fell away originally mm -hmm. after COVID. i mean it had a really bad introduction didn't it to the market mm -hmm. just coming in before COVID and then being hit so hard but i actually think that there are going to be some opportunities for investors um, to profit off this one i'm really liking the way that it's unfolding at the moment and i just want to see another um, a te another test of this bottom here in June 2023 to see either it go up a little bit more and come back. And I wouldn't be too worried about letting it give away some more to the market, letting it rise a bit more to get mm. that little test. I think this area is really, I won't say washing itself out, but consolidating enough, which is what we're talking mm. about last year. And there's a few stocks in this I won't, in this payment area, I'll say pay, broad payment yeah. areas, because you've got buy now, pay later, you've got payment systems in there, mm -hmm. like Square and those sorts of ones as well. So I, I like this area. Well, the there's moment. a lot of mergers and acquisitions, mm. and yeah. the, the, a lot of companies will get Which is what we up. were talking about last year, saying I think mm. that's going to get a lot of consolidation, and I think the winners are going to do really, really well. All right, let's have a look at this next one. Mm. Big Tin Can Holdings, love that name. Big Tin Can now, Holdings. Now this is um, market cap of 290 million, another one mm. on the small end of the market. I was wondering what you think about this one because it looks like it's come to a grinding halt on the weekly chart. We still haven't got confirmation that the lows in on the monthly chart just yet, but there's huge upside here if it um, starts moving up again. A lot of but upside it, potential. But it is a small stock, so mm. this is not for everybody. There are stocks on, our, on that we look at from time to time, which we say are more high, in the higher risk end, which this one would be. Let's just have a look at the sort of price moves that it can do over a few months. So there's 100% or 90% there. You know, you're looking at mm. volume the last couple of years is a lot lower than what it was in 2020. A lot lower, isn't it? So Which is exactly what really you're talking about. So there's yeah. a bit of that doubt happening. Mm. Uh, but look, I mean, if this stock takes off if, from where it is now and gets going, short term, there's a bit of resistance around here, which is about 60% upside. I mean, if it picks back up to where it was prior to COVID, there's 120 in but there. But people will see stuff mm. like that. And, and good, if you're a good trader, then go for this. Yeah, no but problems it's not at all. For just, but some people not, will see that and they'll go, oh, just get in just in case. Yeah, definitely. Because I think a FOMO. lot of people were stung about FOMO around mm. here and have watched this stock fall all the way mm. down to the bottom. So yeah. just a bit of caution required. Now, this next one Asia. is interesting. Does that look like a beautiful chart? See, that looks like a piece of art to me. I just think that's beautiful. <laughs> You're a sick puppy. <laughs> All right. Now we Isn't talked this about ETF. All right. Yes, it is. We talked about this ETF. Um, mm -hmm. It was the Asia. Um, one of our lovely YouTube. Was it a, a student or someone from? I'm not sure. I can't, can't remember. remember now. We but some somebody. lovely person emailed in about this one. So it's a Beta Shares Asia Technology Tigers that ETF, look good. which looks really nice. Now the reason I've got it on the chart here is because I wanted to show you the other ETFs that with AI and They're called an ETF hack. And to, yeah, I know, it's gorgeous, isn't it? What a name. Just love this. Look at the blue. 
um, chart there. They're all moving together though. Mm. But what's interesting is this Asia one is actually lagging behind. So it could mean that this upside that we've been talking about mm. is going to follow what's been happening on the other ETFs. So is that hack and that ATEC, are they both still Asian? Oh ones? no, these ones are not. These are more global They're ones. More global ATEC equity. is, the, I think that's the Australian one actually. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember which I don't, one I don't is which. study ETFs. But so that, not. the hack, hack is definitely a global is it? Um, yeah. Okay. So let's have a look there. I've got them on the side there. Um, Beta Shares Global Cyber Security ETF. Okay. Hack. That sounds interesting. And then we've got Morningstar Global now. Technology. Um, cyber Security and calling it hack. Yeah. I like that idea. There's <laughs> a Morningstar one, which is nice. Um, XRO. So zero. we've got, we always cover zero. It looks like it's extended, as we said before, mm. but look, it keeps climbing, doesn't mm. it? So we think it's within the zone, 13140, but who's to say it could end up right up near these highs here. So that's the big mammoth of the whole area. T Technology One is another yes. interesting one. Yeah, I like now, that. Now this one is actually has been quite extended. So mm. there are some stocks in this space where you know you're not going to necessarily buy them right now, but you're just going to wait for them to have a bit of a pullback. Mm. So in the short term, if this takes out the low here in July 2023, I'd like to see it come back to between 12 and 13 dollars, closer mm. to 13 ideally, and find support. And then we could get some good opportunities in this one. Now, Brainship Holdings is 600 and around 56 million dollars. Uh, this one has been down for a while. We've covered this on a previous show here. It's trying to actually find a bottom. You can see this little sideways move, not confirmed yet. The challenging part is the right set of rules to buy it, mm -hmm. right? And this is where you need experience with these types of shares because you don't know whether the bottom's in at this point or not. So very cautious um, approach and a very skilled um, trader needs to be um, looking at that one, we'll just look I mean, at the daily. You can see there that the volumes nice are still a bit there. lower at the moment. But Actually, so, one yeah. of our traders, we, one of our workshops that we did mm. uh, at our Art of Trading that we used to run, I remember mm. talking to her about it and she, because we talk about what, wait mm. for confirmation at least on the weekly chart and be lo always looking at what's happening on the long term and she said to me, look, I've done some analysis, take a look at this and then she did some analysis on the daily chart. Yep. And you know how we're always telling people just if you do it, trade on the daily chart, make sure that you look for confirmation first on the weekly yeah. and the monthly. Well, anyway, she actually found a stock that, believe it or not, it worked brilliantly on the daily. But this mm. is really the point, isn't it? It's yep. about, we teach people all sets of, you know, these rules that are fantastic that you can use anywhere. And it's about you being able to prove to yourself where it works. And, mm. and so, for example, that little check on that low there, she would have a certain set of rules that would once that, that plus a couple of other things were confirmed, she'd be buying off that. Okay. And it was amazing how it worked every single time. And I had an email from one of our students who's been with us for a long time. He's done our diploma, he's done the advanced, he's done our CFD and Forex course. And he's come, he's just, he's, the way his brain thinks because there were things that you had said for years which mm. hadn't actually clicked in for him, but he found a technique that mm. we that you've talked about for years and something to look for when a stock falls to see that there's a turnaround. And he's actually seen how this turning around of the share prices works so frequently mm. on very short-term time basis and can make a lot of money. So he's doing extremely yeah, well. It's, it's when people are ready for it, they hear it. Mm. You know. And so look, we've got Volpara Health Technologies, wow. which is something that you were talking about health that you'd be yes. interested in. Um, this stock looks beautiful. And see how the um, consolidation that we saw prior, if I could just get that there. We've talked on previous shows how we look for certain setups that happen on stocks. And this is a lovely little setup that we've seen here unfold. And it's just broken out of that little setup and taken off. So short-term trader could make some good money but it might go up for four or five weeks stop and then do this again you just don't know well, that's what i think it's probably mm. what we'll see is you'll probably see it come back down to this sort of level basic you know because it's doing that through here if i use the cross here you can see mm. if i put the cross here on is it on now yep. so you can see how from this point it broke up and then it came back to that sort of level again roughly mm. So it breaks up and it might come back to that level somewhere and then well it's gone through that dollar mark which we correct. talk about on all show mm. the show a lot mm. so look i love that i think it's really really good i'm surprised you haven't put 
stocks like Square on this at the moment? Uh, look, or Block, sorry. We talked about Block mm. on another show when we did the stocks. So you tech didn't want to put it on? Stocks? No. Okay. So I, I, there was a couple of others I didn't put on either. Dubber. Um, yes. Dubber um, was an interesting one. So mm. I thought, let's have a look at that. It's an incredible fall. Let's just see what it's done now. Even though it might be out of favour at the moment, you know, it's a 96% fall. You've got to have that on your watch list. That's right. After a fall like that, and especially with this basing pattern al mm. along that bottom, there could be some really short, good short-term trades out of this stock coming mm. up. But like I said, if we have a look at how volatile it is to the downside, we can just see just in a couple of weeks it falls 24%. So yep. you need to you've just got to be really careful with this one in watching it because you could make it a really great profit and then lose it. So that's um, the last stock that I've got for this one. Well, I'm disappointed. You are? Yeah, that's. I would have thought you had another 20. I've got another seven to go but that's after the break oh so that's for the bonus stuff for our talking wealth people well that is it um, for our topic for tonight we've got all our systems back up and running again which is fantastic now for those watching on youtube if you are interested in building your wealth then subscribe to talkingwealth.com and you'll get access to hundreds of interviews with experts from around the globe there's a free seven day trial just waiting for you to subscribe by visiting talkingwealth.com now janine before we get into more stocks i think it's time we get into your famous what the segment <laughs> famous okay dale the title reads bank of bunnings helps keep west farmers intact bank of bunnings what what that doesn't even make sense to me can you just say that again what what the what the okay <laughs> too I know it's a great play on words, but, and there's always a butt, Dale. I know, sometimes the butts are big. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, I wasn't calling it to you. I wasn't saying anything to you, Janine. Um, I don't know what you, hang on, I just got to put my foot out, yeah, out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say about that without getting myself in trouble, Janine. You just did. I just did. Lucky I can't reach you. You can't help yourself. And it's a case of foot in mouth, as you said. And anyhow, back to West Farmers. They ought to be careful because bank is actually a dirty word at the moment. If you're a borrower, Aussie banks have hiked rates along with the RBA's cash rate increases. Well, they have. I know. I mean, it's not the bank's fault. I know, exactly. They're just. I don't know how you can blame your in bank for interest rates going up because it's the RBA putting them up, so that's not. But then it's just because of all the spending, so blame the government. Well, their margins keep... were really thin at one stage, and now they're just yeah, taking the Yeah, now they're cream, making a they? bit more money, but you know they mm. kept them down, and they. You know, but to me, it's if it's about your capacity to borrow and your planning part of it, but also mm. you know the banks looking after you as well and making sure you can afford to borrow. But you know when the government pulls push billions of dollars into our economy, what do you expect? So true. That's and I, I guess I have to say it's true, don't I? I have to you agree do. With him. Given an article in the Fin Review recently shared around 60% of the company's EBIT came from Bunnings, wow. but in recent times the CEO seems focused on less, less on what blokes want and more on what women want. What? Oh. <laughs> Bunnings. And um, what would that be, Janine? I've never been able to work that one out. How did he do that? Yeah, you've always wanted to know what women want, don't I've you? I've always wanted to know what women want. <laughs> it could be dangerous for um, you. I'm always confused All about right. what women want. We know the market's likely to peak in three or four years. What does well whenever markets go up and what continues into the deep dive down? What goes? What, what does well when markets go up and what continues to do well when markets take a deep dive? Think quick. We've Lipstick. just been talking. Ah, I knew you, there we go. You got it. Lipstick. Well done. <laughs> Women will always buy lipstick, no matter what the price is, because they want to feel pretty, and that lipstick's pretty cheap. Well, yeah. I'm told what else it is. were you thinking? Well, I was thinking, geez, you know, Bunnings. I was trying to lag to you like, you know, shovels. Thinking of boys' toys. Boys' toys. No, I was talking about what women want yes. and what women buy. Again, and you I don't know that. You actually did get it right, so you do know more than you're letting on. What? <laughs> You think I'm being sexist now, don't you? I do think Because it's, it's not just about what um, men want. So Bunnings. Bunnings is not just about what men want. Women go there too. Women go there too. I know <laughs> women go there too. I go to Bunnings for the bloody sausages, but I'm not being sexist. Bunnings not just for men. So anyway, there you go. Yep. Yeah. And I love Bunnings and the people there are always awesome. I've always felt well looked after there. Geez, how did I get you 
to, to, to say that. Let's get back to the topic, which is preparing West Farmers for the future with Botox. What? <laughs> what? Bunning, from Bunnings to Botox, how the hell do you put those two things together? And, and how would you even put that on a strategy paper if you're the CEO yeah. of Bunnings anyway? Bunnings to Botox would have been the title then, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it have been better? Uh, uh, and would... you're getting too good at this now, Dale. Let's take a look. I have, I'm, I'm confused right now. Bunnings to Botox. Yeah. The article reads, the retail major wants to be big in everything from lithium to Botox. How's it going to be big in lithium? What, are you going to go in and ask for a box of lithium? <laughs> Like, seriously, I need to make a battery, I need to get some lithium, I need to get some dynamite, I need to get some, I'm going to blow something up. And get a Botox. <laughs> and get a Botox injection, what? <laughs> I might get myself in the poo here, mightn't I? Uh, well, I hope Well, not, apologies but... to any plumbers out there, we have to say that. Well, that's true too, that's very, very true, but okay. again, but that doesn't make, I mean, you can't be all things to everybody. Well, you could be I mean, I know, Bunnings. I know a lot of women love Bunnings, they go there and they can get some great <laughs> stuff there, but it's, to me, Bunnings is not sexist and I do think they're fantastic and Look, I always like I think it's there. a good strategy because women spend in the boom and the bust, you know, to make themselves feel good, like you said, the lipstick, but they might change slightly what they spend on or how much they spend. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, what's, what's better if you were in a recessionary environment, what's better than go and get a can of paint and just give it a bit of a spruce up in your bedroom? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not talking about putting... I'm is not putting polyfiller... Spruce up the bedroom? Well, I'm not talking about putting polyfiller on your face oh, or something like that. I can't wait like to that. talk to your wife about that. <laughs> Sprucing the bedroom up. With a bit of paint. <laughs> All right, that is it for our What The segment before we spiral into something worse than what it could be. Now, call us... Now on at 03929 That's 03929 We can even text you your question to the number that is on your screen. So make sure you pick up your phone now. The numbers are on your screen. So please send us a text or pick up your phone. And I think Janine stopped laughing now. We're fine. Whilst we wait for your text and calls and you better do them, we'll get to the next email. Our next email is from Joe. Um, hi guys, I've been focusing on improving my risk strategies while sitting on the sidelines and your chat with Jeff Link on Talking Wealth Platform was really interesting regarding inverse ETFs. Do you recommend any inverse ETFs? Do you recommend any inverse ETFs on the ASX to research? There's not a lot of information regarding using ASX listed inverse ETFs. It seems they're just using the strength of the Australian dollar against the US dollar, or is it all that there is to inverse ETFs? I would love to hear your thoughts on using this as part of your risk management strategy in the Australian market. Kind regards, Joe. Are you okay now? Yes, I am, thank you. I had a deep breath. Hmm. Why don't they just, why do they call it inverse ETFs? Well, in theory, they're supposed to work inversely to what the All Lords is doing. So if the All Lords is going up, they go down. If the All Lords is going down, they'll go up. So it's in theory, they talk about it as a good hedging strategy or a way to make money in a bear market. So why don't market. they just say shorting? Well, they could, but it's not really shorting. Mm. But there's different index ETFs. And it can be a good strategy. Like there's index ETFs called Bear and there's another one called... Oh, I forgot what it's called again. Um, I mean, they're probably BBOZ. Shouting, yeah, BBOZ, that's it. And they're probably shouting about another one there. <laughs> and, I mean, you've, you've done the research on it more so than I have. And, and it's really... It's, 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 it's much easier for them to make money yeah, the other way. It's much easier for you to make money by shorting the market and everything mm. else. So I'm not necessarily think it's a great strategy. I think that's what you're trying to say, yeah? Exactly. I took the words right out of your mouth. <laughs> you can find a good stock that you can work on that with better. All right. Anything else you'd like to say on index ETFs, on bear ETFs? No, thank you. That's very kind of okay, you. Okay, cool. Well, can we get back to some yes, sense and sensibility now? Yes, we can. text. Okay. All right, we've got a text now. And this one is from Mark and Mark saying... Currently own MSB is the stock he's looking at. He says he's currently owned and he's at a 20% profit and he's asking us for our thoughts. So what do you reckon, MSB? Oh, look, if I was holding that, I'd still be holding it. Yeah, mm. it's going up. If it's going Good. up, it's only just come off the bottom there. Look at that. I mean, that's potentially got a huge mm -hmm. rise yet to go. It's, it's well over the dollar mark, which is the first thing that I check for these smaller stocks. Yeah. And it's just look, looks like full steam ahead. I mean, if that... If that's going where I think it's going, um, 
it'd well, be look, it could easily get up to one sixty one, eighty to two dollars yeah. in that sort of bracket. But again, I, I like it. Look, the, the challenging thing with this is how do you set a stop loss on it? So the price is currently here. The nearest low is down there at twenty three percent. So that's well, really this is the. I think that's the issue more than anything. It's not you know what do we think of it and how high do we think it could go. It's more how is this how is the downside going to be managed? There's lots of little gaps in here, so it could just fall straight back down. Look, I mean, it's... But that's the point, is if you buy a stock, you should know how, where mm. and how you're going to manage the exit, not just buying. And that's why I find a lot of people, I know I've said it numerous times mm. is in seminars and saying, saying to people, how much time do you spend on looking to buy stocks? Yeah. And then how much time do you spend working out preparing when... Preparing a strategy. Preparing your strategy to manage it and sell it. Mm, which and is why we teach what we teach. Yeah, and most mm. people spend 90% of the time looking at what they're buying rather than how to manage and what they've got. And read stories about it, and that's mm. it. That's the decision. Mm. So All anyway, right. we've got another text, Nishanine. We do. We've got a text from Daryl. G'day, Daryl. MP1, I bought it $8.18. Thoughts for short to medium term, please. I added the please in there for you, Daryl. I'm assuming yeah. that you said that nicely. It's going up. All right, so that looks beautiful. Um, yeah, love it. I think we've looked at this recently, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't even change my mind on it right now. There's a little gap there; it may come back and fill that. But Big move, though. It's, over a look, few how weeks. do you set a stop loss Lots on this though days, for sorry. this sort of volatility? And that's mm -hmm. the that's the hard thing with it. I have my own views on that, which differ from yours, but there's no way that you could say what, that, that. What are you differing from me? Well, see, I'm. If he's got a profit, I'd be the want to take his original capital off the table once it moves into such a strong move like that with a volatile stock like this. I'm not talking about mm -hmm. big top 100 shares. I'm talking about stocks that you know that can be whipsawed in and out of, and it may return to the sort of trend it had in the past, but it might not, Correct. and that's the risk with it. So mm -hmm. if it just you know it meets resistance around these levels or maybe goes up a little so bit higher. So you're high, suggesting sell half. I'm saying that if it was me, I'd be I'd want to look for a strategy. I wouldn't just sell half right now. There's no mm -hmm. exit rule. I'd be looking mm -hmm. for some sort of rule that I'd set to take um, his capital off the, off table. the table. So his money's protected. He's yep. just playing with the market's money now. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. Mm. I don't have a problem with that. I just think there could be better strategies. No, no. Well, he bought. Here, yeah, there could be. We'll tell him, tell him what they are. No, I'm not. Oh, it's because you don't have one. I'm just playing around. <laughs> okay. But there eight, might be better strategies. 818, anyway, so he's bought here and he's got a, a return of probably 14% there now. It all depends on your knowledge and your skill and your experience, doesn't it? Really it does. what you would do. Mm. So if you're somebody with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of skill, so it's going to be yours, one set of rules. So what would you do right now? Just continue I'll be to hold it. I'm yeah. holding. Okay. Simple. There you That's have it, That's pretty simple for me. Uh, that is it for, is it Megaport? Yep. And Megaport. our next email we've got now, Janine, this one is from Craig who says, Hi, Dale and Janine, thank you for your great shows and content. I've been watching and listening to your show now for about six months, purchased and read both Dale's books. I've recently started studying with Wealth Within in the short course, with a short course to start with, and I've completed module one and now into module two. Fantastic, mate. I've learned such a lot so far and look forward to learning more using this knowledge to help me help in my trading journey. I wanted to get your thoughts on adding to positions. He says, I plan to add funds to my portfolio by saving a minimum of 10% of my income. If I add these funds to my starting capital allocation that is in the active positions, and if these positions are trading well, would you add the additional funds to the current positions evenly to keep the total capital allocation in line with our sound money management rules. Thanks again for your helpful advice on your shows. Regards, Craig. My answer is no. I just put in the. I'd put it in my trading bank account. That's he what I do. He talked about sound money management rules. Yeah. That sounds like our speak. He is. He's in module two, mm. and he's learning more stuff. That's as he's good done. that he's, he's only just started already. module two, as he said. What you do, Craig, is if you're saving ten percent of your income, which I think is brilliant to mm. do, just keep putting it into your um, cash management account or whatever account you have that's linked to your broking account. Put that money in there because what will happen is with those positions you've got, you'll be selling them in between six and eighteen months, and as you sell them, you work out your total capital position, which includes the current value of your total portfolio of stocks that you currently currently own plus all of your cash and then you do your position sizing based on that rather than just trying to add to stocks because you might be adding to each one of those stocks evenly but one of those stocks you might be adding to might be peaking out 
and about to start to fall away. So you don't want to add to them that sort of stuff. And so that's what how you, you work do. out performance as well, based on all mm. that cash and mm. those shares, not mm. just on the shares in Correct. your portfolio. Yeah. So the other thing too is why mm. couldn't he just buy another share? Do you it could, depending on whether you've got positions, enough mm. position size, depending on if you've got, uh, you want eight positions, nine positions, 10, 11, 12, whatever you want, you've got to work that out. But again, it's just put the money in the bank mm. account, in the cash management account. And it's okay to sit there earning a couple of percent, three or four percent, because if you get the right stock, you could be making a lot of money over th that th next three, six, nine months when you do get into the stock. So, so what if his portfolio is full, right? Keep he... putting your money in the bank account. Well, okay, so, but what if he wants to add to positions at some point because he wants to just build it up, trickle because it he will across get, the top? Because he will get to that. Like, I, Were you listening to my I answer? I know, but I didn't like it. Well, why not? What do you want, don't like about it? Well, you're talking about building it up, but to what point should he build up the capital exactly? Because that's what you're doing. As you're using your total position of your cash and your shares, you're adding to your positions anyway by, as you're selling one, you're taking another position with an increased position size. Yeah. So it's working that way because you're not holding stocks for more than 18 months generally. Mm. Ish. So it's 9 to 18 months generally you'll be, Actually, he'll be holding Actually, he should them. model it. That's the way I did it perfectly. Yeah. I did that for years mm. and years and years and years. I did that. It was just Model it simple. yourself in a spreadsheet to see how it's going to work. Easy to do. So all we right, can, that's all we have on the topic of adding to your positions. And we can argue more about that when the show goes <laughs> off. Now, we hope you've enjoyed our show on YouTube. For those watching on Talking Wealth, stay tuned for your bonus content. For our YouTube viewers, now's the time to show your support for the show. And this means you need to comment below and give us a big thumbs up and make sure that you are a subscriber. In next week's show, we take a look at 10 stocks to get you 20% profit in the near future. We'll also answer your questions, take your calls and so much more. So put next Tuesday night show into your calendar. Now it's your turn to talk to us as I pose the question, what stock do you think will perform best in the next month? Comment below and let us know what you think. And whilst you're there, smash that like button by giving us a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel.